What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you some secret ways to maximize the way that you use Profile Builder in your 3D modeling. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so as you probably know, Profile Builder is a very powerful profile creation extension. So if you do wanna check out Profile Builder, you can do that at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash Profile Builder. Note that is an affiliate link, meaning I do receive a commission if purchased, but I do really believe in the tool and I think it's a really powerful tool. And you've probably seen it used for creating things like fences and rails and other things like that, right? So something like this, where it actually like creates the rail with the different pipes on it, that kind of thing. And it is very powerful for that kind of thing. But one of the things that really opened my mind to this was a great presentation by Matt Wheeler. Matt gave a great presentation at the 3D Summit, at Brightman's 3D Summit. Um, he's gonna be rolling out some stuff on YouTube, but in the meantime, if you wanna go find him on LinkedIn, Matt Wheeler is a senior partner and architect at Affinity Architects. But um, one of the things that he talked about is he talked about how he uses Profile Builder as kind of a tool. And so, for example, you can actually use Profile Builder to create tools that do different things. And so like, here's a great example. Um, sometimes placing objects in the center of a surface can be kind of a pain. Right, so I could take this object, but I would have to go find the midpoint right here. Then I would have to go find the midpoint over here using two points, and then you could place this on the midpoint, which is fine. Um, you could definitely do that, but there's a faster way using a midpoint placer tool. So you could just create an assembly. You could create an assembly, you could call it midpoint placer, and basically you could set it to have one component, and it's going to have only the given spacing option, and under the drop down right here, there's an option for only middle. Well, what that means is that means that now you can take this assembly and you can place an object just like this. So say that you wanted to place something halfway between two points. So say you wanted something along this line, but halfway between these two lines right here, notice that's going to place the object between the two points. Well, because of the way Profile Builder works, when you select this, if you just pick a different profile or a different object inside of your model, you can swap this out really quickly. So you could use this to put basically any object that you wanted to based on a midpoint. Now, one thing to note about all of these is these objects are being placed, um, and let's see if we can see it. These objects are being placed based on their model axes right here, or their component axes. So wherever you want the object to be placed, you wanna make sure that the axes are set like this. But say that you have a library of different ceiling fans or something like that, you could set this up where you could swap out any ceiling fan in your library just like this. And that is probably a good point too, is you should probably be creating boneyards of things that you like, meaning um, groups of models that you like um, that you can bring into SketchUp quickly. But the midpoint placer is a really interesting tool. And so you could also use this to create different spacing tools, right? So for example, I've created multiple different spacing tools in here. And what they do is they're basically designed to place objects along a certain spacing. And I've saved these and I'm gonna go ahead and save this one as well, but I'm gonna swap it out. So I have my placeholder geometry in here, um, but I'm gonna save this. But what you can do is you can create these preset objects that space things. And so for example, if I select this, this, this is an object that I've set to place objects at every two feet. You can see how right here, we've got every two feet in here. So what I can do is I can use this to place something every two feet inside of my model. So say that, for example, we wanted to create something a little bit more decorative around the outside of this object. We could use our two foot spacer in order to do that like this. So what this is going to do is that's going to place those things every two feet in here, but then I could make this be whatever I want it to be, right? So for example, say that I was to just generate something. So say that I was to create something fairly simple, right? So just an object right here, I'm just going to push pull it out and then we'll just add an arc. So nothing super complicated, just something like this. And I'm gonna click in here and you can see where those axes are because that's gonna be your placement location. And so we'll go ahead, we'll pick this up and we'll make it a component. You wanna make sure that we set our component axes to that same location, but then we're just gonna call this decorative piece. Right here, we'll replace the selection with the component. Well, now you could come in here with this 
object. We're gonna make sure that we've got this one selected, but then we're just gonna pick this object right here and notice how you can replace in any object that you want at a two foot spacing. But the point is we've basically set up an assembly that's going to place objects based on a certain spacing. And the cool thing about this, and we're gonna say no on saving that current assembly, the cool thing about this is you can save these to a library, right? And then you can set it so that you can see all of those different objects in here. So if I wanted a four foot spacer, I could just bring in my four foot spacer object like this, and it's gonna be ready to do that. So we can use this in order to create different spacings of objects. You could also just have a spacer function and then adjust it, right? So if we take this one right here, this is set to put it things every two feet, but say I wanted them every four feet, I could just um, adjust that right here and then update that assembly. So this is a really like modular adjustable tool once you start thinking like this. And so you can also use Profile Builder to create linear placements of objects, well, the cool thing is this newest version has a random rotation and scale function. So you can use this in order to create different copies of trees, right? So this one just has one tree in here right, right now, but you could do like alternating trees or something like that. But if you look down below, there's an option for random rotation, and then you can also set a minimum and maximum scale. So if you're taking trees like this, um, and say you wanted to randomize them, right? Because these are pretty similar right now. Um, but if you were to just update the assembly, notice that every time you do this, it's going to apply that random rotation and scale to your assembly right here. So you can use this in order to really kind of adjust that. But then if you wanted to, you could always bring it back to a zero rotation and then a one and one, and then put it back the way that it was before and you'll have your original trees in here. So you can use this to create a really cool randomizer of objects. So one cool thing about that is if you have multiple different collections of these trees, right? So say I was to place another one of these here. Um, that's not the one I want. So say I was to sample this collection in here, I could click, I could place more trees like this. And then I could click and place more trees like this. But because they're all the same assembly, I could select all of them at once, right? I could select them all and I can rerun this with that randomization going on so that you can randomize multiple different groups inside of SketchUp really quickly. So super powerful way to randomize groups of things along paths. All right, so then another cool thing you can do is you can also use this to place objects on junctions on lines. So for example, I'm going to just draw some random lines going off of these lines over here like this, and what we're gonna do is we're going to basically create an assembly. So we'll just create a new one just so you can see it. We'll create an assembly with a component right here. We're gonna to toggle this spacing off, and we're just gonna pick this little greeble thing that I've created right here, and notice how I've got the object axes in the middle of this object right here. But now if I double click in here, do a control A and I run this, right? And we're going to set our minimum junction angle to like zero degrees, um, just so nothing gets excluded. But now if I run this, notice how it's going to place an object at all of the endpoints and the junction points. You could also set it where it doesn't place it on the endpoints if you just wanted it on the junctions right here. So, and whoops. And so you can use that to place objects along different points like this. Now, another cool thing that you can do is you can also use this as a pipe generator. Um, and the cool thing about this is um, where if you use something like a pipe along path or a uh, lines to tubes, it's going to create this once. But if you were to use this to create pipes that you wanted to be able to adjust, you could do that really easily, right? So we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a profile like this. Uh, I think I probably want to lay it down. So we're going to lay it down right here. And so we're going to lay that down. We're actually going to use the profiles function for this one, but we can add a new profile. We'll just call it pipe right here and see how this is selected. Well, now we've got this set up where we can generate pipes. So if I pick this, right, and I want to pick all of the edges. So I'm going to do a control A in here. Um, so I have selection toys selected, so I can do a select only edges, but now we can run this with that pipe all along these different edges just like this. We can use this in order to really quickly create that. You could also um, adjust it. So say I wanted a smaller pipe. So something like this, we're gonna offset this in right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drop a copy 
of this in the model, just so that I have it right here, not the raw geometry, but something that I can sample. But say I wanted to create a new pipe right here, we're gonna call it smaller pipe like this. So now we've got that selected and we can pick all of these profiles, right? Or whichever ones you want, really. And you could just um, update those by clicking on this option right here. And we're just going to click on apply. We'll notice that that's gonna swap out the pipe that you had in here. So all of these objects are going to be adjustable um, into other objects. So you can just replace them with this new profile right here. So we're gonna apply this and say that you did want um, all of the verticals to be small. So something like this, you could go ahead and you could swap them in. We're gonna apply that. And so say that you wanted to replace this, you could just come in here and say that you had something in your library, you could just pick that. You could adjust it right here. And then we're just gonna pick our different profile members like this. And we're just going to update those with a new pipe type, right? So it replaced those with another pipe type. And we could just pick this other one too, do a different pipe type, and these are all very adjustable. Now, one other cool thing about this is there is an option built in where you can actually trim these objects together. So you can trim to solid. So what that means is that means that we could use the trim to solid function. And we're gonna pick the object we wanna trim to, and then the object we wanna trim right here. Well, notice what that did is that came in here and that trimmed that pipe so that it's smooth in here as well. So it's like a piping generator. Profile Builder can actually be really powerful. And then one function we need to explore a little bit more on this channel is the ability to use spans. Because what spans do is they give you the ability to actually set like hanging pipes and wires. So we could create an assembly right here. We're just gonna click on new one. Right here, we're gonna pick a component, which in this case is going to be um, this right here. We're gonna set this to have a spacing of, we'll say 36 feet. So that this uh, spaced out a little bit longer. We'll go ahead and we'll put it in here so you can see what that's going to do. That's gonna put those at a maximum of 36 feet, but then you can set up your span function with a profile. So I'm gonna click in here right quick. And let's say that we had just a wire profile that's gonna be very narrow, right? I'm gonna say it's gonna be a 16th of an inch like this, so not very big at all. But what you can do is you can edit a profile. So we're going to select this, add a new one, we'll call it wire right here. So it's just a very small profile, but we've got that profile selected in here like this. So we've got that wire profile and let's go ahead and let's update this so that you can see it. You can see how it put that on the ground right here. We're gonna set our up down offset to a height of, we'll call it, if this was at the top, it's gonna to be 24 feet. So we're gonna type in 24 feet right here. And so now what you can do is you can set a sag, right? Because what that's done is that's got that wire in here and it's running straight across. Well, you can actually set this to have like 24 inches of sag. So when we do that, like this, notice how that wire is going to sag in here. And so you can adjust the number of divisions in here, which is gonna make that smoother. So if I was to do 24 sag divisions, um, all it's gonna do is divide this into more pieces. So if I update this, notice how that curve is just gonna get smoother. But you can use this in order to add sagging wires and sagging chains and other things like that. And so if we wanted to, we could take this and we could create multiples, right? So we could duplicate this and I'm gonna give it a relative offset of negative 24 inches and we'll say 24 inches again to the left. So what that's gonna do, we'll update this right here. Uh, probably need to move it up a little bit more. So we'll say 22 foot six inches right here or 22 foot nine inches. But notice how I can use that in order to create these sagging wires in here. Well, the cool thing about that is these wires are going to automatically sag by that 24 inches um, between every single one of these objects, even if I was to select a curve. So if I was to come in here, pick a path like this and place this along that path, notice how you're still gonna get the sag in there of the wires. So it's just like a wire creator tool. This is actually really cool. All right, so one other thing you might find helpful is if you did try to create just like a singular wire assembly, right? So this is just an assembly, we're just gonna call it sagging wire. 
right? And so what I've got is I've got this little 16th of an inch um, wire profile in here, but the problem is if I try to run this assembly, it's gonna tell me it has no valid parts. That's because this wire needs support components in here in order for that to work. I'm gonna to toggle my tray back on. So I'm gonna to toggle my tray back on, but what you can do is you can create a support component, right? So all I did is I just drew some lines right here and I just modeled it as a component with the axes right in the middle. Well, you can take this object and first off, I'm gonna place it on its own tag. So in this case, I'm gonna call it wire support, but we can add this component into that assembly well, now what this is gonna do is this is gonna take our wire and it's going to make it sag between the different support points that we put in here. So if I run this, right, click from here to here. Like, and we wanna make sure that we set a component in here as the support. So then we're gonna come in here and we're gonna update this like this. But notice how now we've got this tool that what it's going to do is it's going to create a wire between different points. And you could set this up um, where it sags differently depending on that spacing, right? So if I go into my component spacing and I say I want that to be every two feet like this, and then I update this, notice how this is going to be different in here. But now you've got this wire placement tool that you can use inside of SketchUp. You can also come in here and adjust the sag, right? So I could come in here and say I wanted this to be three inches instead of six inches. I could just update this right here. That's going to adjust. But then since we place those wire supports on their own tag like this, we can just toggle them off. And now we can just have the wires in here. So now you have a tool that you can use in order to place wires on objects. And so what we're gonna tell it, right, like say that we wanted to just create a wire that went along this object right here, what you'd wanna do is you'd wanna set this so that your supports are going to be only at every vertex, like this. And then we do wanna make sure that we've got a bigger sag in there. So in this case, we want our sag to be like 24 inches right here. But now if I run that, we wanna make sure that our component junction angle is down to like, five degrees or something low so that we're sure it's gonna pick up every one of these points. And so I actually ended up having to set the junction angle as zero, but notice how now it's finding every one of these points and it's adding a sag between those. So now I have a sagging wire creation tool for SketchUp. All right, so leave a comment below. Does this give you any ideas? What do you use Profile Builder for? Because I feel like it's a really underutilized extension for SketchUp but I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think? I will link to Profile Builder on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.